Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chaken Analytics. I'm your chief market strategist, and this is the halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. Thanks for joining me. Each and every Monday, we kind of go over a few different things. Obviously, the rating system here that's available on the ACP platform um, for a small purchase. Uh, you add the plug in, and then you can see the fundamental. It's a fundamental rating, it's got 20 factors in it. We'll go over a few of them today, and then we'll see how they kind of paint on our charting system versus ACPs. And ACP, you've got a lot of areas where you can add multiple different levels of technical indicators. And on, on ours, we have some technical indicators, but they're slightly calculated a little bit differently, but check and money flow is the same between both platforms. But we like to show you our setups alongside of what you can see in the ACP platform. And then obviously you can see how the ratings coincide potentially with technical setups. And today's technical setup, we're just looking at uh, a negative sell signal. It's called the parabolic SAR sell signal for today. And I basically just chose uh, some New York stocks. It's about 60 names that are getting us a, a sell signal today. We're going to go over those and we're going to look at one or two features of the stock charts system where you can put a chart book together, a list, and then obviously we'll be flipping over to the uh, check-in system to take a look at those particular uh, stocks on our system. And I've got a few other names I want to call out that have started to look good on our own uh, screening capabilities here on Chaken. So let's take a look at the charts. All right, folks, we're here at the stock chart system here. And what I thought I'd do is just kind of talk about what a parabolic SAR uh, really stands for, right? And it's, it stands for stop and reverse. And um, it's based off a trading system, uh, you know, Wild, uh, Wells Wilder called uh, the parabolic time slash price system. And you can learn about it. If you go into stock charts, um, you can go to chart school, type in parabolic star, you'll get the same definition. But you know what it's what it's telling you is the indicator it says right here, um, it, it price, prices as they're rising and, and above prices as they're falling. In this regard, the indicator stops and reverses. So when the price trend reverses and breaks above or below the indicator. Okay. And so all I'm doing is I scanned in a predefined scan for stocks that are breaking down. And I saved it as a list. And inside that list, I created a chart book. Now, there's about 60 names in this list. And I just sorted them. And I hope it stayed uh, the way I tried to do it. I'm sure it did. Um, I sorted them in order of volume, right? So the first one is Schwab. And we'll take a look at that here. And then I, can, I saved it in here as well, right? So these lists should be in order. So here, what you've got is, you know, obviously, the stock's selling off. Um, they had weak numbers on trading and some other things that, that um, you know, the metrics that they try to uh, look at as far as fees and things of that nature. So it's pretty weak. It was a bad report. Now the stock has kind of been sideways and really now broken this new low. Now it didn't close there yet, obviously, but if it can get below there and start closing below that 74.42, call it 74.50, whatever the number is, um, you know, you may want to, you know, use it as a, as a signal of, of potential follow through to the downside. So if I pull up Schwab here on our system, I'll, I'll give you one little hint here. Now this, that this particular relative strength has been breaking down really since the end of March and beginning of this month in April 1st or so. And that's not to say it's very predictive on earnings. The, the point being is that it's pretty much a downward trend, really flat on our long-term trend. Money flow is terrible. And obviously, relative strength versus the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY, has been breaking down uh, for weeks, okay? So typically not a good sign. We don't like to play earnings because I call it, you know, fighting the invisible man. But the point being is now you've got multiple signals telling you, um, you know, that particular, you know, this particular name is, is kind of breaking down. So let's look at the next one here in the chart book, and I think it's Pfizer. So that's a pretty cool feature. I like this idea, right? I can change my metrics. I can look at different things. I can look at 10 per page. There's a gallery view. I mean, I can pull in a bunch like this. It's kind of really, really cool, right? You can look at different charts in a gallery for Schwab. So really great functionality um, on, on stock charts in general. And then obviously when you go to the ACP platform, that's kind of where we live. And there's our rating sitting right next to everything. Now here's Pfizer, right? Obviously really strong rating and the stock's kind of breaking down today. So what are we down? Two and change to as far as percentage percent per points go. If I pull up Pfizer here, PFE, I already know it's neutral plus, right? On our system. But let's see what's really happening in the chart. And what's really happening is it's kind of a sideways trend. I mean, it's been range bound and you can't 
you can't say that it hasn't been. It's really been between, you know, this $50 range, uh, 45 to 50, gets above it a little bit, some good news, and then kind of trails back, gets below it a little bit, moves higher. Again, a lot of this is really the whole narrative for the whole market, really. It's been a little bit choppy, but you're starting to see this not really getting overbought and then selling, breaking down again, negative uh, take of money flow. But a mixed signal on relative strength, not an easy one to follow. Obviously, there's some news uh, here related to the, to the name today. Uh, next one, we're going to try to look at stocks. These are all ETFs. Um, another, another healthcare one, right? So ironically, what do you see? J&J, uh, you see Pfizer. And look at this. This is the healthcare ETF. Well, obviously, it's selling off because those two names are big percentage weightings in this particular XLV. So we looked at Pfizer. Here's J&J. And what do we have? We have a bullish name now. It's starting to break down. Now, look at the earnings. This is really interesting. So different catalysts inside of the rating you know, will create you know, opportunity going forward. So the ironic part is, is obviously healthcare is a, is a defensive sector in general. And there's more you know, to just J&J and, and Pfizer and that healthcare ETF. But we're getting a little oversold, but the relative strength is strong. This could just be coming down in sympathy um, with Pfizer. So this is something you got to really kind of dig into and take a look at. So this could be an opportunity if it starts to find support around that 175, it's not far away from it now, 178 and change. But if you, you could see this, right, clearly, I think you can, right around 174 and a half to 175, you see that area of potential support and it's right around the long-term trend. So you want to take a look at that and potentially you're finding these ideas inside of the different indicators available to you on stock charts. Let's go to Procter & Gamble. More of a staple, consumer products, you know, they're, they, can, they live inside of this area of uh, needs versus wants, right? I mean, PG is really a neutral rating. You could see that here. Weak financials, weak earnings, but technicals and experts were liking it. Obviously, it's the big name, the consumer staples. Consumer staples is, has been doing very well. But this particular name is probably going to have some pricing power into inflationary times. But don't forget, their profit margins are going to get squeezed to the point where they have to understand if they're going to sacrifice sales um, versus margins and, and it kind of meets the rubber meets the road there. And um, depending upon the consumer behavior on these goods, which is typically going to be strong, right? In, in inflationary times, people will tend to continue to buy what they need again, from a personal product standpoint uh, versus what they want. So, you know, less video games and more, uh, you know, uh, paper towels and, and other things in the house. Right. So, you got to take that into uh, in consideration as, to, as well. So again, relative strength strong. We're a little overbought. So it, it deserves maybe a bit of a pullback here, but it is a neutral rated stock, but kind of a wedge forming here, right? You see that downward area here and an upward area here. So again, mixed signal, but an interesting to take a look at um, nonetheless. So let's look at Zendesk, which is an, you know a name that's kind of been trending um, down but really sideways. It's really interesting. You see this long-term trend, this 50-day popping underneath the 200 as the stock's moving higher, but you're seeing RSI rollover. And now obviously we're neutral negative on the name. So let's take a look real quick, see what Zen is telling us about here. And as I said, I'll look at some of the factors in our rating as well. So you get an idea of what they're really calculating and measuring. So not the worst looking chart. I mean, for me, we like these kind of relative strength changes to the upside. It's a little bit sideways. Obviously, it's down about three percent or so. You've got to look at um, you've got to look at news and people are here. You can see down here in this news headline, um, you know the the golden cross forms on Zendesk's chart. What they're referring to is really the death cross, right? The fifty moving underneath of the two hundred, but the two hundred's rising pretty rapidly. So this is a mixed bag. And that relative strength with massive money flow here, actually pointing to something a little bit different from a technical basis. Fundamentally, as I said, we'll look at how our ratings work here. And you can see really how these particular uh, metrics like long-term debt to equity, free cash flow, not looking great. Price to book is a little heavy. In other words, it's overvalued as is price to sales and return on equity. So guess what? The, the point is, is that from a valuation standpoint, it looks a little heavy here. Um, then, then we look at earnings consistency from the earnings standpoint, uh, projected PE, not a lot of good things going on in earnings and look how they're rated 
very bearish and bearish. The only thing that's been looking good is technicals. And so uh, you're seeing money flow, price strength, and relative strength versus the market being the three leading catalysts here from a technical basis. So again, a little bit of mixed messages here. So I said, I've got about three or four minutes left here. Um, I want to point out a few names that have popped up on uh, some relative strength change screens. And one of them, ironically, is a retail, I guess, multi-line retail target corp. Now, this has been under some pressure. There's obviously, I mean, the chart tells you more than I can. Um, but you can see where the, the fundamental ratings have changed a little bit here. You see that um, the strength is just starting to change, although that's not enough really to be terribly excited about it. But it's overbought and it's above its long-term trend. So again, you got earnings coming out in a month, literally 30 days from today, and the stock is starting to rise. Now, maybe people are starting to look at this and saying, well, it's maybe it's oversold. Uh, there's been such so much bearish sentiment and, and lack of bullish sentiment too, um, that you, you, know, you may want to try to look ahead, right, uh, of what's happening here. So that's a name. And ironically, another big retail name that everybody knows is Lululemon uh, from a, apparel and textiles name, almost an identical looking chart here. Okay. So are people trying to rotate ahead and looking at these names that they're a little bit too oversold here? And I'm starting to see glimmers of hope here. And this is really, you got to squint to really see that on the upside, but I don't know. I mean, I, what I'm saying is the charts tell us, you know, what is happening and then the why we may not find out for a month or a week or even two days from today. Um, so you start to look at some of these names in here. Another one that's interesting is uh, Jinko Solar, uh, which is a semiconductor uh, name, obviously um, in the area of renewable energy, right? So it's got a little kind of a multi-catalyst here. Sideways, you know, obviously, um, uh, you, you know, in the semiconductor industry, which has been under pressure and a lot of shortages and there's some supply chain issues that are still ramping up in that industry. But you can't ignore a few things. Oversold, good money flow, pretty stable from a standpoint of range, very predictable range between 38 and roughly, um, sorry, roughly about 50 or so. So about a 12 point range or so recently, but it can get overbought and obviously extended lower on the downside um, to even into the low 30s and high 20s. So not the best looking chart. I just thought I'd call it out. I think it's kind of interesting here. But when you start to see names like uh, these apparel names start to break out slightly, I'm starting to scratch my head a little bit trying to figure out, again, a long down, downward trend here in this G3 apparel group. Um, negative relative strength was predominant during the course of the last uh, year almost. And now we're starting to see glimmers of hope. Again, it's, it's had some false breakouts before. Just be careful. We, obviously, we want to make sure that we stick to a process and try to find names that are in strong stocks and strong groups. Now, this group is not strong, but if I look at um, Target, let me look at that group, the industry itself. So I do have a strong group here. So again, the consumer is not dead. People are still betting on consumer spending and things of that nature happening here in this particular market. Even though rates are rising at a rapid pace, um, the consumer still tends to, uh, tends to spend into the face of inflation and potential recession fears. Okay, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I just wanted to kind of go over some uh, particular features on the ACP platform, some of the predefined scans, comparing it to our indicator, looking at our charts, and obviously looking at some other names that potentially, you know, could be starting to form better technical patterns. Again, looking well ahead of current headlines and news that's happening today. So thanks again for tuning in. We appreciate the feedback and definitely appreciate uh, the looks and the listens here on uh, Stock Charts TV. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.